Yeah. Two minutes. All right. Welcome again. Yes, it's difficult. See, if you've never given a talk before, when you when you stand over here, you're very nervous, and you try to, uh, I don't know, invent a way to not be nervous, right? So, uh, and this is what I'm doing right now. I'm just making stuff up. So, uh, no, it's really difficult. It's really hard. It doesn't go away. No, no, no. No, it's okay. Thanks. Yeah. I was telling my friend uh, this yesterday, and he told me uh, Messi, the football player, I'm not into football, but he told me Messi, apparently Messi, up to this day, he throws up every time before a match, which is very strange. I mean, the best player of all time, and he still does it. So, uh, goes to show you. I'm not saying I'm messy, but I do throw up before every talk, so... Yeah. <laughs> so... <clears throat> yes. Yeah, can you make sure to speak uh, a bit louder because I have trouble hearing from the Uh I will try. Okay, I will try, yeah. I don't think the microphone is connected to anything. So uh, I, I will try. I will try. And if I forget, just wave, whatever, right? So, can the people in the back hear me? All right. All right. Then, uh, I think there's kind of a seat over here. I'm not sure if it's, uh, it's a free... It's, we have a free seat over here. I know we don't want to sit over here, but uh, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. <laughs> oh, that's uh, really... Uh, I can start. I will wait for this gentleman. Yes. All right. So, uh, yeah, okay, welcome, I guess, uh, again. Uh, my name is Mahmoud Abdelhani, uh, which none of you will be able to pronounce, but, uh, but still. And I will try to convince you, fine people, that Java is an interesting language to develop games in. Um, and if nothing else, I will change your mind about some things. Uh, but, but like I said before, um, I didn't expect so many of you to do Java, right? So that's really, um, for me personally, it's a little bit disappointing, but, uh, but fine for you guys, right? You do Enterprise Java, most of you, right? Okay. All right, I do Enterprise Java as well, and uh, as, you can, as you will be able to tell, I'm a big fan. So uh, let's see. All right, so, um, and also like I just mentioned, uh, this is for the benefit of the people who are not watching at home, right? But uh, like I just mentioned, I really have a, a difficult time starting a talk, right? Uh, it's, it's just difficult. How do you start, right? And I used to make fun of people, you know, when, when you, you always have those talks and the first couple of slides are about your hobbies and whatever and how many cats you have and that kind of stuff. But so you give a talk. And when you give a talk, you kind of understand because how do you start a talk, right? This is a room full of people. You don't know the people. You don't know their interests. So how do you start a talk? So, introduction, right? So, uh, yeah. All right. So, so, so my, my um, the, the, okay, again, so background, of course. Like I said in the description, which I think nobody read, but the description, right? Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I, I'm porting Doom 3 to Java, right? And um, I learned a lot of stuff. So, uh, this is, okay, I don't know. I'll just go through this, right? Most of my slides are like this, actually, so it's kind of boring, but we'll see. All right, so June 3, right? So that's the name of my project, right? Because we are excellent at naming stuff, right? I don't know. And like I said, like I say here, it's a temporary name. I honestly, I just, you know, I did, you need to create a new project, so what do you call it? Yeah, June 3, right? At first, I thought I would call it Doom 3J, right? Like 4J, like everything in Java, like log4j, whatever, 4J, but 3J. But then I named it this and whatever, right? It's up on GitHub. Uh, you can check the codes, and uh, I don't know why. So this is the question uh, everybody seems to ask me. So why are you doing this, right? And the honest answer, and most people find this answer very amusing, but it's not meant to be amusing, is that I don't remember. 
Um, thank you. Yes, but it's honestly not meant to be amusing. Like I said, this is just I honestly don't remember. I started it as at five years ago, uh, kind of, right? <coughs> Sorry, but I don't remember why I started it. To be honest, right? I have some ideas about why I started it, but I don't remember the exact reason I started it, right? Um, but as far as I can remember, right, so five years ago I had the Doom 3 source code on my hard drive, and it was just there. Um, that's it. I started reading it, and I thought, I think this is how it went. It probably didn't go like this, but, you know, I thought, hey, this is a cool project. Um, and what I just mentioned five years ago, right, uh, at the time, this I do remember, at the time, I thought I would be done in six months. I thought, no, seriously. I thought I, six months I would be able, I, was, I would be done, one thing, and the other thing is I would be, the, the Java version would outperform C++ version. Right? So, uh, yes, planning, right? So anyways, um, <coughs> sorry. So yeah, five years, right? So what, what, what's, what's, what, what do I use? I only use Core Java and I only use OpenGL and OpenGL. Um, Wrapper and open air wrapper. That's the same wrapper, actually, but whatever. And if you have any questions, remarks, or tackles, whatever, just send me over there, right? Let's see. So my... Um, yeah, so I'm not an expert, obviously, right? Um, one time, this is very interesting, actually, because in the description, usually, I say this is a hobby project, right? One time after the talk, somebody came starting, uh, talking to me uh, that this is an official port of Doom 3 to Java, right? And I'm officially affiliated with its software, which is not true. I'm not officially affiliated with anybody, so myself. But I'm like not an expert, not an expert game de developer. I'm not, I don't actually see myself as a game developer. I'm an expert in Java, which is very important. I'm not an expert in C++. I'm not an expert in a lot of things. Um, I tend to offend a lot of people uh, when I talk about this stuff, so I'm sorry if I offend you. And uh, I hope somebody learns something, least of all, never to come to any of my talks again, right? Um, so yeah, this is, this is just my disclaimer, right? So yeah, like I said, I expected less people here to know what Java is. But, uh, but this is kind of important to the, the context of the rest of the talk, right? So what is Java, right? So yeah, some people say it's an interpreted language, some other people say it's a compiled language, some other people say it's something else. It's actually something else. It's not really in interpreted, it's not really compiled, right? Who doesn't know, actually, well, I'm just going to explain it uh, very well. Okay, this will come back later. Just uh, ignore this for now, right? So yeah, open source, Java is open source, which isn't actually 100% true, right? So if you go to the Java room here at Fosdem, it's called Free Java. And if you ever thought why it's called Free Java, it's because not everything in Java is actually open source, uh, which is a very complicated story. And I think most of you know this better than me because I don't know the exact details of why, right? Uh, some people blame Oracle for this, but this is a problem that existed since Java was Sun, actually. So. Mostly, you know, the, great, the, the biggest part of it is open source, which is also important for the rest, right? Java chose to do signed math, right? So signed and unsigned, right? So unsigned is numbers that don't have a negative uh, component. They are basically positive. So if you have 32 bits, it's 32 bits of positive joy and whatever, right? And Java chose not to do this. And the background story behind this, which is a f kind of funny story, is uh, James Gosling, back at, in the day, he couldn't decide whether to put unsigned math in Java or not. So what he did at Sun, he wrote a lot of equations, unsigned math, in the hallways, right? And he just asked all the engineers at Sun to solve it, uh, to solve them. And surprisingly enough, not a single one was solved correctly. So he decided it was a bad idea. Um, I, I disagree with him, but that's, that's, he's him and I'm me, right? So that's something else. Um, Java. We use references for everything, which is strange. That's no, not strange. It is what it is, right? It just is. What is strange is that you have no pointer exceptions when you don't have pointers, right? Um, and the reason this is strange, if you don't know why this is strange, actually, is because, technically speaking, a reference could never be null. Um, but the way we use references in Java, they can be null because we use a kind of a hybrid reference. It's something in between a reference and a pointer, it's something weird. Uh, that's why it's yeah, reference by value is actually more accurate. 
right? Um, yeah, we don't support operator overloading. So yeah, if you've ever tried to write a game engine, a 3D game engine especially, right, without operator overloading, it's very, very annoying. Uh, it's very difficult. Um, I remember I talked at Fosdem, I think, last year or, some, or something, and somebody mentioned the same thing, and he had this comment, which I love. It's like doing math. He was talking about Go, I think. But doing like this kind of math without operating overloading makes your eyes bleed, right? It's just, it's just terrible. It's just terrible. And there's also a lot of stories about why they didn't do that, but we'll not get into this because I stuck with time, and my timer isn't working. How much time do I have? How much time do I have? People in blue. I've been talking 10 minutes? Uh, seriously? Okay. I've been talking 10 minutes on slide one or slide two, two, whatever, right? And in Java, we have final, which is kind of like cons, but it, it's not really, right? So, uh, <coughs> yeah. So, I'm going to give you this slide. I'm going to skip this one, actually, but... Uh. Right. So, I love this comment on, on Stack Overflow. No? It's from Hacker News, about why Java kind of sucks, right? And I'm not sure if people can read it in the back, but if you can't, it's amazing. Just trust me. And when other people start to laugh, laugh with them. Right? It's just amazing, right? But this is absolutely true, right? There's a lot of, like, a lot of the hate that comes with Java is just like, you know, it's, it's what people are used to doing in Java, right? The way people are used to writing code in Java, like getters and setters, right? Everybody here writes getters and setters. Have you ever thought that that was a retarded idea, right? Because, yes, thank you, because it is, right? You, you actually don't need it. There is a historical reason for why you needed it like 10, 15 years ago, but people forgot that reason are still doing it. But we actually don't need them, right? I'm not talking about something like Project Lombok or whatever. No, you don't actually need them. And when you write getters and setters, you force the JVM to, to do like an extra, uh, extra optimization stuff for you, right? which shouldn't be there anyway, because you're creating like an indirection, right? But whatever, right? But that's, that's like, uh, I just love this. Anyways, so I'm kind of like, uh, so how many people don't know these terms? Be honest. You're not appearing on the camera anyway, right? Yes, okay. So yeah, so actually the first slide, you know, talking about Java was kind of like me ranting about all the shit I hate about Java, right? This is actually, so what is Java, right? So Java, because you can call a lot of things Java, but it's, it's kind of inaccurate in, in times, and it's kind of incomplete at other times. So you have the JLS, the Java something something. It's a language, a language specification, actually, right? So some people call that Java, right? Because the language specification is completely open source, and if you implement it to the, sorry, you can implement it in your own way as long as you produce, produce these results, and we will recognize you as Java, right? So that can be Java. You have the JDK, or the language itself, right? So the actual code you write, which is based on the, the specification. Some people call that Java. Maybe it is. Other people, and most people, actually, or most purists, right, they tend to call this Java, actually, right? So the JVM, the Java Virtual Machine, which does garbage collection for you, which does just an compilation for you, which has the Java, mem uh, the Java memory model for you, right? Um, so it's kind of strange what's called Java and whatnot, right? But uh, we'll get to that. So to you, right? Because uh, no, no, no. It's just uh, something. So uh, one, no, no. It's just <laughs> no, no, no. It's just uh, because I saw you, I saw you closing your eyes, right? And uh, one time I was giving a talk, right? And I saw a gentleman in the first row. He was just like snoring, right? Uh, obviously, right? It was after lunch, and people say I have a soothing voice or boring, but which is code for boring voice, right? Right? And it just. Uh, but at the end, I gave a demo, and he was just clapping like like crazy, like like he was awake the whole talk. But whatever, doesn't matter. So I don't blame you. That's that's my uh, thing, right? A friend of mine gave a talk once. You know, he did it. It was a lightning talk, and he did it like uh, like a boxing match, right? So at first, I wanted to structure this talk like a boxing match the same way because I like that really, right? Which I didn't in the end, right? But I had made this slide already, and I love this slide, so I just kept this slide, right? Uh, but this is the idea, right? So C++ is the reigning king of, of, of the game development world, right? Whether you like it or not, whether you admit it or not, right? And I see Java as kind of like a contender, right? It has a lot of good, good stuff that it can offer. I think it can offer, right? I'm going to kind of like, like show it, right? Which, again, doesn't work very well because most of you do Java. But I'm going to do it anyway, right? Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, I was listening to this song while I was... Does anyone know what, what song this is? Excellent. So I was listening to this song uh, and just uh, wrote it here. So, yeah. Right. So, like I said, this is based on a project I did, right? So the first thing you come across is setting up your environment, right? And I cannot stress enough how much hell it is to uh, set up an environment in C++, right? Right. Um, the reason I'm still using this laptop, which is a seven-year-old uh, seven laptop, while I have a, like a couple of months old laptop at home, is because I have set my C++ environment on this laptop, and I don't want to do it again on my other laptop. And I know it sounds stupid, but really, I hate it. I hate it so much, right? Um, but I'm not a full-time C++ developer, so it's probably easier for them. But still, there's so much that can go wrong, right? You have to, like... You have the, have the right DLLs, the right version, 32-bit, 64-bit. Uh, Set up the linkers. You have a lot of like macro and preprocessor bullshit you have to deal with. It's like it's really hell, right? And, and this one, right? So this one is actually this comment here, right? So at one point I upgraded to a different. I had a, I have a different laptop with a different version of Visual Studio, which just didn't work, right? Because the project was written in that Visual Studio. And you have to have, like, the professional version, and I was using the express version because I'm cheap, right? And it didn't work, right? So it was just hell, right? And these are two guides that were written. One is for, this is for Windows, and this is for Mac OS, right? It's kind of more detailed. Only to get the project running in your uh, IDE. That's the only thing in this guide. And it's a very long guide, right? And it's a lot of work. And, yeah. So, uh, um... Yeah, money. Uh, does anybody know what Scrum is? Yes, thank you. You can come sit over here as well. So, no, but uh, so Scrum is kind of like a, if you know what make is, it's like a super make. Let's go with that, right? And this is one of the things, it was also included in the project. So it's a Visual Studio project, but they also had like a Scrum file, which you can see as a super make file, right? Uh, for the Linux build of, of the game, right? And I want to do some benchmarks for GCC. Uh, so I just thought it would be easy to, to do this, right? To just load the scans file and, uh, and, and compile it. And it wasn't, right? It was really a lot of work. Uh, I, 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 can't, I won't describe it here because I've already rented about this enough, right? Um, Chromium, yeah, let's not talk about Chromium. Right? Suffice it to say, it takes like a day to compile it, but uh, that's, that's a different story. But yeah, so, so this, is, this, this is C++, right? This is, this is very difficult. It takes a lot of time, right? You have a new developer, you want to set up your environment, you literally, you're literally doing it for a day or whatever, right? And it works, sometimes it doesn't, you upgrade, it doesn't, whatever. It's difficult, right? But this is kind of actually what, what we want, right? And this is kind of what we get in Java. And the reason I say kind of is because, like most of you know, you can fuck this up. Anybody can fuck this up. Anybody can make anything as difficult as they want, right? But in the purest sense, you can make it this easy, right? You download an IDE, it has a JDK sometimes, it has Maven sometimes, and that's it. You load in your project and you, it works, right, most of the time. But, like I said, you can make anything difficult for everybody. But, yeah, right? So this is kind of like how I see it in Java, right? You have a lot of wizardry stuff, right? Nowadays in IntelliJ, you can just point it to a folder and tell it, okay, load some stuff, and it will figure out how many projects you have, how many dependencies you might have and not have, and that kind of stuff. They're getting good at it, right? And it's mostly open source, right? In the C++ world, everything is closed source, and everything you have to pay for. And sometimes you have to pay a lot of money. A friend of mine wants to use, like, three plugins from a company. It was like one plugin is $5,000, but if you buy all three, you get them for $10,000, right? And we were very simple algorithmic <laughs> plugins, right? He could only implement them himself, which he did, right? Because it was cheaper, right? So, uh, but that's the world of C++. It's a different world, right? But not everything is fine, of course, in the world of Java. I mean, paths, right? You have to set up so many paths if you want to run it from command line, which can be shitty. And sometimes 32-bit versus 64-bit can be very annoying, right? Especially if you do native code set, uh, stuff, like what I do with OpenGL and, so, and such. So it's not perfect, of course. But I think it's, it's better than, than C++. Right? How many of you do C++? I didn't ask that, actually. Wow. I feel betrayed, right? It's like, 
It's like the same people also so also do Java actually, right? So, but but okay. So, uh, all right. Oh, I thought I removed this slide, but uh, okay. So one other thing, right? Like I just mentioned, make files, right? How many of you? Okay, let's let's not keep doing that, right? I actually find it annoying when speakers do that, but I, I sincerely want to know, which is weird. Um, but if you've never used a make file or any make, so I use I use the word xmake because there are a lot of variants, C make and Q make and or whatever. Um, but they're essentially mostly the same. And if you've never used them, they're basically just meant for building. Like you can do some testing sometimes, you can have some profiles in there sometimes, depending on, like scons can do a lot of cool stuff, right? But it's not Maven, right? And if you've never used Maven, which is some of you, right? You can do a lot of cool stuff in Maven, right? So a lot of this stuff you can do also in make files, right? But this one, right, this is the most important one. I think this really makes Maven the best thing ever, right? And 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 that's uh, yeah. How to how to explain this? Um, I don't know how to explain this. Does anyone know how to explain this? Does anyone want to explain this? Uh, so transitive dependencies, especially, right? So when you have a dependency that has a different dependency, right? Usually, if you have a pom file, uh, if you have a Maven file or uh, or a make file. One of those cool make files that have dependencies, because most of them don't. You just know what the dependency is, but you don't know what the dependency depends on, right? Maybe sometimes you do, maybe sometimes you don't. Maven deals with this, right? Maven is excellent in this, right? It will get the transitive dependency for you, right? The right version, as long as you adhere to the Maven like like strategy, right? And I think this is really, really, really amazing, right? And Java, cool, right? C++ doesn't have this. Um, when I talk to a lot of friends of mine who do full-time C++, they're, they're also amazed that C++ doesn't have this because it's actually kind of a very simple problem to solve. But the problem is in C++, everybody's very protective about their own things, right? And nobody wants to communicate or, or like, like say, okay, we're going to have one standard or whatever. So, But it's it's kind of simple. So, but yeah. Ow, ow, ow. Yeah. This was tweeted a couple of days ago. Did anybody see this? So when you see something like this, right, and you've never done C++, you're kind of amazed by it, right? Something takes 48 hours to compile. And with one small optimization, it goes to four hours, which is still a lot of time, actually, right? I know tem TensorFlow is huge, but still, right? Um, so this is something, so this is, this is the part where I talk about where I uh, needed to do some scone stuff to do some benchmarks, right? So at the beginning, right? <laughs> Compiling Doom 3 in C++, right? It took me really like 25 minutes. But the reason I have a question mark is because I don't have Windows 7 anymore. So I can't really reproduce it. So you're just going to have to trust me, right? So, uh, is it, so yeah. But yeah, now it takes like 10 minutes, right? You do like a multiprocessor optimizer switch, right? It takes three and a half minutes with 100% CPU. And this thing has like eight logical cores, I think, which is a lot, even if it is like a six, seven year old machine, right? GCC, okay, kind of the same. I'm not sure, so when I got an error in doing it with O2 optimization, and there's a reason why I did it with O2 optimization, which I'm going to tell you about. But when I got the error, it was like 30 minutes, but then I fixed the error and it took only 12.7 uh, minutes. I'm not sure why, and I'm not good enough in GCC to know why, actually, so let's just leave it at that. And O3 optimization. My code currently, it compiles in like 25 seconds. And like like six seven seconds of those are like like Maven just starting up and doing stuff doing nothing actually right. Um, I think this is amazing. I think that for game development this is amazing, right? You want to prototype the whole time. I know so none of these are incremental builds, right? So all these are like clean and builds, right? right? What it says there, from scratch, right? Oh yeah, and if anybody has any questions or remarks, any sign, just shout, right? I prefer that actually, so not shouting, but I prefer questions like in the middle, right? So, any any questions? No, really? You? You have a question? You want to say something? You don't believe this? It's true. Sorry? 
You want, you're trying what? Oh, you're going to, trying to think of a question. Okay. Next slide, I'm going to come back to you. <laughs> but, uh, but, but this, right? So, and, and I tried like, like, so incremental builds are very fast, of course, right? So, uh, and, but incremental, Java also has incremental builds, right? So that's why I'm kind of like, like trying to, 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 to compare apples to other strange apples, right? This is amazing. I think this is amazing, right? And granted, this doesn't give you an executable, right? So you still, the way Java works, of course, this is like a meta something in between bytecode, really, right? But this is the reason I did the O2 optimization here for the benchmark, right? Because a lot of people, they, 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 they talk about this. Um, so like, like if you talk to a JVM architect or a JVM compiler engineer or whatever, right? And they say, actually, you shouldn't compare what the JVM does for you with like pure uh, GCC, right? So like O2 optimi uh, O0 optimization, you should compare it to O2. And the reason for this is because at the end of the day, the JVM still JITS code for you, right? It does like, like hotspot optimizations for you when it runs, right? And it's kind of, the only way you can compare it to something is with optimization, so that's why it should be O2. I was kind of disappointed that the difference in time between O0 and O2 was so small, but that's something else, it uh, doesn't matter. So yeah, so in, in, in the boxing match uh, thing that I didn't do that I should have done, right, I think Java wins here, right? For me, at least, right? You have a question? Still? You have to, you, so you have to have a question, right? So uh, startup times, right? And this is also kind of surprised me, but, uh, okay, so not this slide, but the slide after this uh, kind of surprised me. So yeah, I'm trying to compare them, all right? So the game runs. Maybe I'll show the game if enough people want to see it, but uh, <coughs> at the end, and if we have time, because how long, how, how much time do I have? Yeah, half an hour. Yeah. Okay, all right. So, uh, so yeah, so I kind of expected this, right? So he, this is the Java version, this is C++ version, which I should have maybe like labeled or whatever, right? But you're starting up the game, right? So Java should take longer, right? It's per definition. Java cannot start faster than, than something that is optimized C++ because Java itself has to start, the JVM itself, JVM up or warm-up time, right? So yeah, so this is actually not what JVM warm-up means, but you, you know that and you're going to pretend you didn't. So, but yeah, right? So Java version of the game takes like approximately like nine seconds longer for the JVM itself to start up and, and do stuff, right? So I expected this, so I'm not kind of, I'm not really that disappointed in it, to be honest. Uh, it, it, it is a huge code base, so, so yeah, it doesn't matter, right? Um, yeah, I, I said there pre warm up with a question mark, right? Because yeah, nowadays you have a lot of techniques actually to, to, to like avoid this kind of shit. Uh, but I'm not sure if you want that. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's nine seconds. Who cares, right? So, uh, so yeah. Um, but this one did uh, surprise me, right? So these are actually loading times. So this is kind of like uh, loading the first level. This is the loading time of the first level. And the Java version was faster. And unfortunately, I don't know why, because I kind of like just made these slides like a couple of days ago, and I was very at deadlines and stuff. So you enterprise developers know our, how that goes, right? Um, so I didn't really have enough time to, to, to like 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 dig into this and see why actually the, the Java version was faster, right? It's not much faster, but I expected it to be much slower actually, at least ex exactly the, the reverse, right? Uh, because always when I'm starting the game, right, at the, the end result is always, right, the C++ version runs, runs first, right? So I, I honestly thought this would be uh, slower, but it's faster, I'm not sure why. So don't ask me that. Oh, you have a question? Yes. Uh, in what sense? Um, just starting up the game took like, 20 seconds for the C++. Yeah. And did they test that and then said they would use the C++ and just carry every other type of testing? Or was but who, who is they in this conversation, sorry? Just whoever developed the uh, rate for C++. Um,
See, if they're not here, they're, they're not allowed to hear the questions, right? So, so it's, 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 it's your right now. No, I'll repeat the question. Sorry. But, uh, but, but I'm still trying to, to understand the exact question. Sorry. Hi. 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 Sorry. Version, yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, that way. Okay, so the question is, so so first, the clarification, the original game is C++, right? So it's not really a port. So the question is, uh, so so the people that, that did the C++ port of the game, did they compare it to Java, right? That's, that's basically the question. So yeah, so it was originally developed in, in C++, uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know, right? Uh, and actually, actually, a funny thing about that, actually, so, so people who do C++ a little bit, if you look into the code of, of Doom 3, a lot of it looks like C, right? And I know a lot of people don't like to admit that there's a difference between C and C++, but it's like a shitload of structs, for example. They also have classes, but they have, like, an amazing, uh, amazing amount of structs, right? And a lot of C paradigms in the game, right? And there is a story that says, because this was, like, the phase that they were starting to learn C++, which is interesting because this was, um, I think, late 90s till to like 2005. The game took like five, six years to develop. And this was the phase they were learning C++ and they didn't like a lot of stuff, so they did it in C, right? Another, another thing, which, yes, sir? Now we mentioned C, so what are your opinions on your, your percentage? How much between C++ and Java? Yeah. And now are you talking about C, so I, I'm curious about your opinion about C. Uh -huh. Okay, so you're curious about my opinions about C versus Java, right? So that's an interesting question. I like C more than I like C++, but that's something personal, right? It's not really about, I'm not talking about this. Um, for You mean from a game development point of view, I assume, right? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to touch touch on this a little bit later, but, but right now at least... Um, For for the purpose of this, you can C and C++ are kind of the same. They're not the same, I know, right? And I'm looking at uh, you, the one who knows what Scons is, because excellent, right? Uh, they're not the same, but for the purposes of this, you, ca you can claim that they are the same. Um, and the reason for that is, um, yeah, I'm going to skip this for now, right? But I'll come back to it later. Sorry. Um, does that as, uh, answer your question? Sorry. You have to have another question. Yeah? So begin preparing for now. And, uh, all right. So I don't know why. Uh, like I said, uh, why this is faster. But uh, and this part as well, which is strange. But I will dig into that. Um, but yeah, I was was mostly interested in the in the in the warm up time actually, not not the loading time itself, right? Uh, I wanted to, in this slide actually I wanted to like demonstrate that C++ was better. But it backfired, so, yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Actually, when I found this picture online, the first thought that came to my mind is, actually, isn't this kind of like child abuse? Right? Because if you put your child in this position and you photograph him for, like, uh, or her, uh, for, like, your own profit and fame and whatever, likes on YouTube or, or some kind of stuff, it's kind of that, actually. But it's a nice picture, that aside, right? Um, so yeah, so multitasking is, is really difficult, right? Um, so this is something else I wanted really to talk about is, is like CPU utilization in, in Java or what you can do with CPU utilization in Java, which you can do with it in, 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 in C++, right? Basically you can do exactly the same things, right? But C++, but Java, it, it's, it like facilitates a lot of the stuff for you, right? And I think the, the next slide, or the one after that, at least, or something like that, touches on, on the thing that everybody hates, garbage collection, right? Um, but actually, garbage collection is kind of like, like, like married to, uh, to, 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 to multi-threading, right? So yeah, threading bonanza, threading is hard, thread safety is very expensive. I think, uh, I hope everybody knows why. Does, does anybody not know? So th thread safety, so the idea of thread safety is that when you make a structure, for example, uh, whatever, like a list. Uh, threat safety means that when I access something or I change something in the list, 
not an, a different thread is not allowed to do something else in that until I'm finished. That's basically it, right? It's actually not that at all, but that's that's like the like the hello world example of that, right? Uh, so yeah, Java does that very well, right? It facilitates a lot of stuff. It has a lot of like, safe and unsafe uh, flavors of structures, right? Like, <coughs> um, yeah, what, what I just uh, explained is kind of like atom atomicity. I don't know how to pronounce atomicity. You're, you're a native speaker. How do you pronounce this? Yeah. What he said, right? Atomicity. It's like, uh, thanks, man. Uh, right. So, so basically, the idea here is is what I actually want to touch on, uh, because there was there was a podcast a couple of days ago, Jonathan Blow, right? And he he mentioned, yeah, you listened to it, the three hour thing. You're laughing, so you have must have listened to it, sir. Oh, you've heard of it. Okay, so Jonathan Blow is the developer of Braid and uh, The Witness, right? Pretty cool guy, not a lot of nice ideas. And there was a, po a podcast a couple of days ago. It was three hours. And, uh, and he, he got asked this same question, right, like multi-threading and whatever. And his answer, and the, and the answer of a lot of game developers, uh, especially the, the engine developers, is there's actually not a lot of things in a game you can do that requires multi-threading and parallelism and con concurrency and that kind of stuff, right? Um, which might be true, right? Because he, if he says that, he probably knows that it's this better than me. I have no idea. Uh, but my problem with this idea, at least, right, whether it's true or not, is this 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 kind of uh, thing, right? So you have Moore's law. That that you don't require multi-threading in. Uh... Yeah, okay, but 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 their comments, or mostly those guys, are in, like engine developers, right? So they mean like in graphics engines and that kind of stuff, right? But give me just like one mi minute <laughs> to explain this, right? Um, so you have Moore's law, and you have Amdahl's law, right? Moore's law says something like every like 16, 17 months, I don't remember, somebody will know the correct number, number of transistors on a CPU thing will double, right? But there's an end of life to that because we can't get any smaller or whatever, right? So at, at some phase, right, we cannot expand a CPU more than that. And technically speaking, we've actually reached that a long time ago, right? But we changed how we view Moore's law, right? So first we looked like, okay, so what's the maximum speed you can gain from a CPU? And now we turned it into something like, oh, how many cores can you get on a CPU? Which is kind of different. Because how many cores comes back to this uh, story, right? And how much, how, how fast something gets is, is, is this story, actually. And Amdahl's law, which I'm going to screw up, but if somebody can correct me, then please, right? Amdahl's law, it says something like... Um, there are, there are not all problems can be parallelized. That's, that's kind of like the, it's not actually what the, what the law says, as far as I remember, but it's kind of like the takeaway that I need here, actually, for this, to prove my point. Let's, let's get, keep it there. Right? Hello? So, uh, <coughs> sorry. So, m that's, that's my problem, right? So, true, not all problems can be parallelized, right? That's what a lot of the, the engine developers say, right? Let's assume that's true. But if you, like, don't think this generation, don't think the next generation, but, like, six, seven generations of graphic engines later, right, you're, you, you're going to hit the roof of, like, I don't know, a single core of, I don't know, what's the fastest now, three and a half gigahertz or something? You're going to hit that. Okay, so you can't paralyze the problem. What done, right? I don't know, right? And, yeah, like, this thing says, okay, so maybe we'll, we'll be better, get better programming again, right? Because we've kind of, like, unlearned how to optimize stuff, so maybe we'll learn it again. But still, there's only so much you can do because it's not going to expand anymore, right? You're going to hit the roof, and that's it, right? So that's why I think this is interesting, right? I'm not saying you need it. I have no idea if you need it. In Doom 3, I don't really need it. I have, like, two threads for the whole game, right? And the second thread, actually, I don't need it, but it was in there in the C++ version, so I did it also in the Java version. But technically, tec I think they were experimenting with threads as well, actually, so that's why they put it in there. But, yeah, do you need it? I have no idea, right? But it's just a question. And if you need it, then C++, uh, Java is actually pretty interesting for you, right? And why? Again, a cool tweet. This one was from, like, a couple of years ago. <laughs> Does anybody not know who this is? All right, so I assume none of you know who this is. So uh, this is uh, Tim Sweeney. He's like the, the guru developer of Unreal and all the Unreal engines or whatever, right? He doesn't do it by himself, but he started once upon a time by himself, right? And uh, there was a discussion, something about the garbage collection, and he said this, right? 
Lately, in the last couple of years, he's been doing a lot of research, I think, about... Uh, dude. 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 That's like... Uh, okay. So, um, he was doing like research about programming languages and that kind of stuff. And he tweeted this, right? And this is like the first tweet I, I think I liked or, uh, or like saved or something like that, right? And I found it a very interesting argument, actually. And I dare say this tweet is actually kind of like what made me do this talk. So if you need somebody to blame, blame him. Um, but this is correct, right? So usually when you have like a big game engine, you have like scripts, right? Because you don't want to hard code everything. So you want AI to be scripted. You want your enemies to be scripted. You have everything to be scripted, right? And when the scripting language gets so compl complicated or complex, right, you kind of like um, write an interpreter, your own interpreter, and your own parser for that. And that's what he's talking about, right? So none of the, the developers that, that keep, keep, keep crying about garbage collection, right, they actually, you know, they, they mind this, right, that you have a large overhead of, of parsing and interpreting these things during runtime, right? And they can be huge. In Doom, they are fucking huge, right? So uh, that's interesting. It has nothing. Yeah, it's kind of had something to do with my point, right? So this is actually the part where I wanted to play this video, um, which we will try in a minute. And if everybody, everybody stays quiet, you will uh, hear it, I think. But um, we will play it now, actually, because I'm running out of time. Uh, let's see. Where's my pointer? No woman. Let's see if it works. Can anybody hear that? Not even the people? All right. Excellent. OK, so uh, OK, sorry. <laughs> but anyways, so that's actually it's related to this thing, right, Embrace GC. A lot of people don't understand how the GC works, actually, right? And this guy, I don't remember his name, Brian something. Uh, this is actually talking about Rust, right? And he was using, as example, the GC in JavaScript. And I didn't know the JavaScript script was actually garbage collected. Um, that's my fault. But, uh, but he was using it as an example, right? Is, is, and this example it just shows that you can have memory, uh, you can have memory leaks in Java in, in JavaScript, right? And that completely screws up your GC, right? And that's kind of like because the reason that's important is is kind of like this slide again, right? The spiky one percent for garbage collection, right? Because the whole time. I have 15 minutes left. Thank you very much. Uh, the whole time, people only talk about stop the world garbage collection, right? Which shouldn't happen anyway, right? So, so some of you are the Java developers and know this. If you have a stop the world garbage collection, something is wrong. It's not the norm. It shouldn't happen, right? But that's the only thing the outside world sees, right? And I did some digging, and I didn't know this either, actually. But Unity is garbage collected, right? Unreal has a garbage collector. And there's an awesome talk from GDC about Mortal Kombat. Uh, I don't remember which Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat has a garbage collection thing. Yeah, memory management more, actually, but the garbage collection thing, right? And the reason, and that's actually the reason I put this thing here, right? because one of the things garbage collection can solve and you cannot solve, or very difficult for you as a person doing pure C++ to, uh, solve, is memory fragmentation, right? So let's say you, you allocate A. These are 30 bytes, right? A and B are both 10 bytes, right? You're free, A. Now we have a gap of 10 bytes and a gap of 10 bytes. And you have a new object of 15 bytes. How do you allocate it? Right? And this is called memory fragmentation. Gar garbage collection solves a problem for you. You yourself, if you do it in C++, it is solvable. Every, everything is solvable, of course, right? But it's a very difficult problem to solve, right? Um, I'm going to skip the rest, kind of, because I'm running out of time. Um, but yeah, not everything is great, of course, in Java, right? Memory footprint, bad. Uh, I don't, what, anybody, no, you have a question, no, you sir, you sir, yes. How did you try compiling it with your VM to a, to a native environment? I have not, uh, so the question is, yes, sorry, uh, the question is, have you tried compiling it with Graal uh, to native code, ahead of time uh, compilation, other kind of stuff, right? I haven't tried it, to be honest. Um, currently, so these are problems I'm just trying to, like, um, if I show you the demo at the end, you will see that I have much bigger problems than this, right? Uh, this, these are just kind of like, because I'm, I'm like, I'm saying a lot of bad stuff about C++, which isn't fair, right? Java also has a lot of bad stuff, right? 
So this is kind of like that. Uh, but I haven't tried it, uh, although a lot of people have asked me that, and I'm very curious myself, to be honest. Um, yes. Any other questions? No. Yes, sir. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I really can't hear you. Okay. So you mentioned working with collections. Collections, yeah. And do, do you actually do that uh, in your course? Because I, uh, what I found is that they are quite uh, costly in terms of performance, and I switched everything to So the question is, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I have encountered the same problem. So the question is, to repeat, uh, do you use uh, Java Util Collections uh, in, your, in, your, in the game, right? Because I mentioned that earlier. Because his experience is they're very bad for performance. This is also my experience. They're very bad for performance. Um, there, this is also the experience of the developers of the C++ version of the game uh, because they created their own collections. Um, and arrays are much faster. Of course, arrays are much faster. Um, unfortunately... I could not use an array for everything, uh, but uh, but I try to use arrays uh, where I can. Um, and if if anybody wants to know more about this, raise your hand now or stay silent forever or something like that, because because this is a Java question. He knows what he what he talks. So not everybody might know this. Uh, does anybody want more information about this part? We can talk more about this. No, no, we can. Trust me, we can. But uh, we can we cannot. No, we cannot. But uh, but but anyways. Uh, so yeah. So yeah, so the memory footprint is just horrible in Java, right? And, but yeah, if you didn't expect this, then you're kind of deluding yourself, right? Java and it, it's kind of. So I think I have another slide on this. Yeah. So CPU overhead is negligible. We don't care about that memory over. But it kind of also depends on which kind of GC you use, right? So I don't remember which GC does what, right? But certain GC uh, garbage GC is for garbage collection. Certain garbage collection algorithms require that you have double the amount of memory, right? Because double the amount of memory you actually need. Because you do something, and then you copy the whole thing to the other thing, and you copy it back and whatever, right? So it kind of depends. And don't look at me like that. I think I know uh, what I'm not talking about. But, uh, but yeah, so, uh, uh, but, but yeah, so it's terrible. And to give you an example, I didn't put it in here, actually, because I don't want anybody to, like, like put a screenshot of my slides somewhere and say, hey, job is terrible. But, like, the C++ version runs, this is, like, it's, it's a game from 2005, right? And it was highly optimized. It runs, I think, average like 128 megs of RAM. And if you like, 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 put the settings to ultra, super, duper, or whatever, I think it runs like 256 megabytes of RAM. Uh, the Java version runs, I think, an average of like one gigabyte of RAM, right? Hey, hey, hey! Don't uh, this is Java, but uh, yeah. Uh, but again, this is not optimized. None of my Java code is optimized, so actually. Most of the code is, is the opposite of optimized. Because the way I developed it, I tried to stay true to the C++ code. Because at certain points, actually at most points, I want to debug it, right? So if I optimize it and it no longer looks like, this, like C++ version, it's kind of difficult to debug, right? Uh, but yeah, it's, it, even if it's optimized, let's put it this way, it will never reach what C++ reached, right? It will never happen, right? But so what? People say memory is cheap, which it isn't, but whatever, right? How much time do I have? Excellent. I'm going to skip this. Because, uh, um, yeah, so, so these are things that, okay, so very quickly. So these are things, you, you don't have pointers, you don't have macros. I hate macros, but you don't have, they can be very useful. Uh, they are very useful in the gaming world, not in every C++ world, actually. Um, and you don't have operator overloading, which I really, really miss, right? Uh, I even wrote something for operator overloading, but that's a different story. Uh, but you have type safety, which I really love, right? And like I said, I'm going to skip this. I'm just mentioning it because I don't know why. Uh, so, yeah, so this is the thing I think one of you two guys asked about this uh, before. It's kind of related to what, what you were talking about, right? So why use, uh, so you use arrays instead of, of uh, collections, right? Especially, right? Um, STL is kind of like the Java Util collection thing. Uh, it has much more, but it's kind of like that, right? And STL is like, it's an extension on C++, which has a lot of cool libraries, right? Am I saying this right? I'm looking at you, because you know a lot of stuff. Am I, am I saying this right about STL? It's a lot, what, sir?
Yeah, but C++ doesn't care. Yeah, I mean, SCL is, I, I don't know, is SCL actually part of the standard? I don't know. It is? Okay, so it is, right? So, uh, yeah, I honestly didn't know that. Because back in the day, okay, so no, no, I have no idea. I always thought it wasn't part of the standard, right? I think I thought that because Effective C++ has a separate book for SDL, so I, saw, I thought it was something separate, right? But uh, if you don't know what Effective C++ is, you know Effective Java? That was actually stolen from something called Effective C++. It's a different book, and they, whatever, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, right? But STL has a lot of stuff, right? But Java has, like, a lot of better stuff, I think, right? Java has put a lot of thought into that, right? So it's cool. Uh, intrinsic for the win, right? So you have a lot of Java functions. C++, if you have a function, it get, gets compiled like it is, right? And uh, the compiler does some optimization for you. In Java, it's kind of different. If you open something, and I, I assume most of you know this, actually, but, uh, but if, if you open something and you, you see a piece of code and you copy the piece of code, and you run a benchmark, it will be much slower than if you don't run it, right? If you, if you run the actual call, right? Uh, something in the... Oh, yeah. Anybody have any questions? I'm going to... Okay, so to repeat the question, because uh, you're my friend, yeah. So, uh, because we're running out of time, he wanted to ask a question that's unrelated to this, but uh, is how did I approach the inverse square root uh, uh, algorithm? Yeah, I don't know if it's an algorithm, but uh, that part, right? And if you don't know the inverse square root, um, it was something that nobody knows for sure who came up with it, but it speeds. Um, sorry? Yeah, he, he himself says he didn't come up with it, right? Okay, so, from the, from the MIT book? It's possible. I have no idea. But uh, let's just assume. We don't know. It's just some aliens, right? We don't care. But uh, but it's, it's, it's a very known algorithm, and it was written in C++, and it only works in C++ because, in C or C++, actually, because you kind of, like, directly talk to the registers, right? If you do it without that, yeah, then you talk to a VM which talks to the registers, which is what I do. To answer your question, <laughs> like I said, debuggability is very important to me at this point, right? Uh, optimization, performance, only if it kills me, then, right? If, if something takes, like, seven minutes to load or whatever, I don't see you. I don't see you. So uh, only if it takes, like, a very long time. So I had a problem with file I.O., for example, right? Because I ported it the way FREED does it and that kind of stuff, which was, like, the shittiest thing ever, right? Uh, and something was, was, like, loading in, like, Three minutes, right? And in the C++ version, it took like two, th two seconds, right? So that part, I rewrote in Java. I wrote, rewrote in a completely different way, right? But mostly, I don't do optimization yet. Uh, you use approximation. Appro what's appro approximation? Approximation, just guessing the value mean of the square root. You mean for the inverse square root? Yeah, but the way the way Java implemented all that stuff is kind of still it still holds kind of true, right? Um, I mean, yeah, it's not one hundred percent. So yeah, it is kind of approximation what you say. But the the funny thing about this, if you approximate it everywhere, it's it's it still holds true, right? Because you're off by the same error everywhere, right? Let's not uh, talk about this uh, anymore. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> any other questions? Because yes, sir. Do I have time to show it on the demo? Uh, Is that including questions or excluding questions? Uh, because I haven't had any questions yet. <laughs> and I need time for that. So, Okay, so I have five minutes yet. So I'm going to... Sorry? Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm going to show you the demo. Uh, I'm going to skip this. Cool stuff. Just look at it. Cool stuff. This isn't true, but cool stuff. Uh, this is true, right? So you don't have console support. Uh, for Java, which is, I think, the biggest problem with game development, right? Because you don't have any native J JVMs for uh, for most of the game consoles we know. But, and this is about, I don't say you should do this, but it's just cool, so I want to show you guys. Apparently, uh, the Blu-ray uh, specification uh, has a part of Java in it. I did not know this. I just discovered it like a week ago, right? And this is somebody who made a video. Uh, he created like a small game uh, in Java, and he ran it on the Xbox One and, and, and the PlayStation 4, um, through the Blu-ray, the part of Java that is in the Blu-ray specification. So, unfortunately, it's a six-minute video, so I'm not going to show. 
Maybe I'll like, show you like uh, the part where it says it's Java. Okay, this didn't work. Okay, just trust me. It uh, it's cool. Yeah, I don't know how to get this. Uh, uh, no. Okay, that's I, I should have thought about that. Uh, anyways, it works. It's just amazing. Just uh, just search it on YouTube. You will uh, find it. Right. This is some cool stuff. I wanted to mention, but uh, yeah, because because of the demo, uh, the the one thing, I'm just gonna start up uh, IntelliJ uh, in the meantime. But the one thing I really want to mention is is just there's a lot of untapped potential in Java, right? So a lot of the things, a lot of problems that we might face in game development, and a lot of problems we do face in game development are kind of easy to solve. And I'm not, I don't mean easy in the sense. So that's why I said Rich Hickey, right? Because he has a whole talk who explains the, the difference between easy and simple, apparently. Uh, I don't mean easy in the sense that it's, you can solve it in five minutes. But we already know what the solution is, right? But nobody does it. Nobody takes the time to actually do it, right? So, yeah, there's a lot of uh, stuff like that. Um, I'm going to show you the demo. And I mean literally the demo. Um, I hope this works. Yeah, it never works with uh, two screens. In the meantime, questions? Just ask. Sorry? This is the demo. This is literally the demo. It took me some time actually to get the demo itself working because apparently the demo was, in the olden days, they released the demo like months in advance, right? Nowadays they don't do that anymore. You can kind of hear the music. But the demo was made with different build of everything, different build of the script, different build of, of like code or whatever, so I had to like do a lot of like exceptions in the demo. Um, uh, shit. Yeah, don't uh, comment about the mouse. I haven't captured it because it's easier this way. Questions? Remarks? Does anybody still like Java? Sorry. Sorry? It runs pretty good, yeah, yeah. So the question is, yes, yes, my friend, my friend. Uh, so how does it run, right? The, so I mentioned, because I mentioned a lot about loading times and that kind of stuff, so how does it actually run? Uh, so my, my answer is you will kind of see it right now, but, but you know, it runs pretty good, right? And um, one of the lightning talks, he mentioned something, I think it was about, uh, no, I don't remember which talk, but he mentioned something about something was ported and they had to port it with errors, right? Because the same errors, right? And this is actually funny because I had a similar thing. I have a specific level there that I uh, load, and it's just very slow at the beginning. And I thought, oh, shit, man, I broke the game or whatever, right? But then I load the C++ version of the game, the same level. It's also very slow at the beginning. So I mimic the inefficiency, which is very important, <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm just skipping this stuff because we don't have time, I think. Yeah, so this is the problem. Doom is a very dark game, right? And, uh, oh, no, 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 no. I, I want to console. Yes. And I have to turn off shadows because uh, that part is still broken. Yeah, so it's a very dark game. Um, we don't have a light switch here. Do we have a light switch? In the olden days, I used to show it on wireframe, but I thought we were beyond that point. So, yeah, we can do this, I think. No, we can do this. Uh, we can cheat. We can always cheat, right? And the reason we're cheating is you get the flashlight. Okay, you don't get the flashlight. I don't know. I don't know why I didn't get the flashlight. But yeah, this is really tiring. Ah. I must say, it actually looks better from here. So if you want to see it, you can. Uh, where am I? Ah. I'm probably over time. So uh, if anybody has any questions. Or remarks, you can just uh, tweet them at me. Ah, don't tweet them at me. Send me a dark, uh, private message. Or just tweet them at me. It doesn't matter. How much time do I have? Uh, Minus less, two. Less three. Excellent. Yeah, okay. So, uh, oh. so, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>